Mohamed Diabate is one of my targets for the New England Patriots, where I had him at the 5-6-7th round and UDFA video. Mohamed, or Mo, is coming off a solid senior season at Utah, where he led the team with 13.5 tackles for loss and had 58 total tackles, which was ranked second for linebackers on the team. Was ranked sixth out of all Pac-12 linebackers with five sacks. He also had one pass breakup and one QB hurry and a forced fumble. Once Mo was back to full steam, Mo had at least one tackle for lost in four of their final five games. He even accelerated towards the end of the season, where he had eight tackles with three tackles for loss and two sacks with a forced fumble and a QB hurry versus USC in the Pac-12 championship, and finished the season with six more stops in the Rose Bowl game versus Penn State. His 2022 season earned him an invitation to the 2023 East-West Shrine Bowl, where he had a great week of practice and a solid performance in a game that was mostly dominated by the defensive squads. Mo is heading into the NFL Draft as an underappreciated draft prospect, despite his solid track record, strong tape, and notable athleticism. However, his pro day has scouts and the media revisiting their outlook on Mo. Before I get into his pro day numbers, I wanted to recap Mo's production at Florida and Utah. Diabate started off his college career at Florida in 2019, where he saw action in 11 games and played a total of 193 snaps. He recorded just 9 tackles, 2 assists, while adding 10 stops. As a rusher, he had 21 pressures, 15 QB hurries, 2 QB hits, and 4 sacks on the season. As a sophomore, Diabate played in 12 games with 448 snaps, 42 tackles, 13 assists, and 21 stops. In coverage, he had 2 pass breakups and even 1 interception. As a rusher, he chalked up 13 total pressures, 5 QB hurries, 6 QB hits, and 2 sacks during the year. As a junior, Diabate played in 12 games, played in 561 snaps. He had 56 tackles, 26 assists, and making 25 stops. As a pass rusher, he produced 19 total pressures with 16 QB hurries, 3 QB hits, but yet no sacks in the year. After that season, Diabate transferred to Utah, where he played in 11 games for 523 snaps, 33 tackles, 11 assists, and 27 stops. As a pass rusher, he put on 24 pressures, 15 QB hurries, 2 QB hits, and 7 sacks total in the season. So, Diabate is not just popping on the radar due to his pro day performance, but has years of good tape that show his attributes. Moe is incredibly quick off the edge and has the flexibility just to whip around the corner. His reaction time is nearly instantaneous as a pass rusher, and is able to create pressure in a variety of fashions with several inside counter moves. Moe's agility does show up on tape, where he can rapidly redirect to the ball and close with a solid burst. His athleticism really shows up when he shoots the gap in pursuit. His athletic talent does transfer into coverage, where he has decent vision for the backfield and has solid awareness in zone coverage. What is more, his incredible length allows him to demand a large space. Diabate has been an explosive athlete for several years. At Florida, Diabate broad jumped 10-4, had a 33.5 inch vert, squatted 605, and benched 355 at just 5.5% body fat. Well, Diabate was able to improve on some of those numbers while at Utah and showed it at his pro day, both in terms of testing and his position drills. Let's review. For his 40 yard, he had 4.52 seconds, which is in the 93rd percentile out of linebackers. His 20 yard split was 2.66. His 10 yard was 1.64. His 20 yard shuttle was 4.25. His three cone was 6.96. His vertical was 34 inches. And his broad jump was 11 feet, which is the 99th percentile. His bench press was 20 reps. Now, let's compare those numbers to participants at the NFL Combine. As a linebacker, Mo would have been tied for 6 in the 40. His 34-inch vertical would have been around the top 5, however, his broad would have been the best. His 
His three cone would have been second fastest as well as his 20 yard shuttle. His bench would have been about middle of the pack. His linebacker RAS is 9.12, which is currently 12th overall after the combine and pro days. As a defensive end, Mo would have been seventh in the 40 yard at the combine. His vertical would have been middle of the pack. His broad would have been tied for first with Byron Young and Will McDonald. His three cone would have been the second fastest by one one hundredth of a second, but his 20 yard shuttle would have been number one. However, his bench would have been near the bottom. His defensive RES is 8.98, which is 12th overall after combine and pro days. Now, as a strong safety, Mo would have been tied for sixth in the 40. His vertical would have been kind of in the middle of the pack, and his broad would have been second. His three cone would have been second fastest as well as his 20 yard shuttle, but there was only a few participants at the combine. His bench would have been tied for fifth. Keep in mind, this is amongst both strong and free safeties. Now, his strong safety RAS is a 9.11, which is fourth overall after a combine and pro days. The takeaway here is that Mo has the physical attributes to play multiple positions on defense. I like Mo as a Patriot for a few reasons. First, he has the potential to help address several issues in the Patriots' defense. First, the chronic issue of having slow linebackers, which admittedly, the team has gotten faster than that group, but they have gotten faster. But they're not exactly fast. The Patriots need Mo speed. Now, Mo is not the fastest linebacker in the draft. However, he's still faster and more athletic than the other linebackers on the Patriots roster. Having a faster linebacker would help deal with those quicker backs and most coverage skills can help with those more athletic tight ends and possibly big slots that Patriots had issues with in the past. Having Mo around would give the Patriots that big, tall, long, athletic defensive player that can play in the box and play that hybrid role often referred to as a rover or potentially a star position. Now, the questions are, do the Patriots want him? Where would they take him? If Mo was just an edge rusher, I would see him as the sixth or seventh round due to the deep edge class. However, his potential to play a hybrid role in a year where the strong safety and linebacker classes are very thin. I think Mo's value is higher than it's currently projected as not including his potential to contribute to special teams. I think Mo is definitely worth considering the 6th or 7th if he's still available. Indeed, Mo is not the heaviest of linebackers, so he might have some issues with pass rushing and taking on blockers at the NFL level. In addition, he isn't the most violent tackler on film. But at some point, the Patriots have to find Mo speed at that line of the defense and Diabate could be worth the effort in the third day of the draft. I hope we see him in Foxborough. So there you have it, my thoughts on Mo Diabate. What do you think about Mo? Should the Patriots draft him? Where should they draft him? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my content, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.